Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week back for a brand new series for the 2016 to 2017 academic year and even though we're up to probably Resource of the Week number 487 we're going to call this Resource of the Week number one of this brand new series and it's back with me as ever Craig Barton. So, for the uh, first resource to kickstart this brand new academic year, being the egomaniac that I am, I've actually chosen one of my own resources here, the Factors and Multiples game by me. Now, before you start having a go here, there are three very good reasons for this. Uh, the first is, it's not actually my idea, this one, the Factors and Multiples game. It has been going for years. I first came across it uh, with the Enrich version which we're going to have a look at a little bit later. But this has been around in the maths classroom for 20, 30, even 40 years. It is an absolute classic. So that's the first reason I don't feel too bad about it. Uh, the second reason is that if you're watching this towards the start of the academic year, this is an absolutely ideal activity to use with, with your students at any age and any ability because there's so much richness in there, so much stretch, so much challenge, so much support. So that's the second reason. And the third reason is, this isn't any old version of the Factors and Multiples game. Oh no, this is the Factors and Multiples game Ultimate Edition. There are so many twists and turns and opportunities for lines of inquiry that hopefully there's enough to keep everybody busy um, and challenged and engaged. So I hope you'll forgive me uh, whilst I technically review my own, my own resource, but as I say, um, it is an absolute classic. So uh, there are two files to download. There's the PowerPoint file and the Word file. So let's just have a quick look at those. So the PowerPoint file um, is very, very simple. Oh, and I should say as well that this is part of my series of rich task uh, resources, all freely available on TES. Um, I think there's about 30 of them now, something like that. All follow the same line of a simple activity and then loads of lines of inquiry which provide your opportunities for differentiation. So here we go, uh, facts and multiples game. So first slide is just a bit of background on um, why I'm a fan of rich tasks and how I like to run my own rich tasks and so on. Um, and then there's a bit of background on the specific task itself there. Um, and then there are some instructions and I always try and summarize the instructions in a single slide. I think as soon as instructions start taking more than one slide, the task becomes a, a little bit too uh, complicated. And as I've, uh, those of you who've heard me speak over the last few years will know, I, I like kids to have success in a task within the first 20 seconds, make some kind of progress, make some kind of achievement. And if tasks are too complicated, I think that's when you can start losing students with that. So the facts and multiples game, um, all you need for it, and this is one of my other favorite things, all you need is a grid, a one to 100 grid. And I always started the exact same way, two players playing against each other. So um, to show you how it works, it's probably easiest just to go to go to the uh, Enrich page because it's absolutely lovely. And there's a link to this on my on my PowerPoint because here's here's an interactive version. So two players. So imagine player one goes first. They can choose any number to cross off. So imagine they cross off 20 and then it's player two's go and they can cross off any number that they like as long as it's either a factor or a multiple of the previous number. So in this case, 20. So uh, player two could maybe go for 40 because it's a multiple of 20. And I always get the students to justify to each other why they're, why they're crossing off that, that next number. And then it's back to player one and they've got to look at the previous number. So in this case, 40, and they can cross off any factor or multiple of 40 that hasn't already been crossed off. So they couldn't go for 20, but they could go for eight. So they're going to cross off eight. And then it's back to player one, and they can choose to cross off any factor or multiple of the previous number. So in this case, eight, that hasn't already been crossed off. So maybe they decide to go for four. And then it's back to player one, and they look at number four and think, are there any factors or multiples of four left? Well, yeah, I'm going to go for 44. And the game continues like that. And you lose the game if you can't make a legitimate move on your go. So if uh, this player couldn't find any facts or multiples of 44 left, then they would have lost that particular round of the game. Dead, dead simple. So the way I run this in the classroom is, is I just tell the students instructions. I play a little game against uh, a student on the board just so everyone's happy with it. And then I just let them play. And I always encourage my students to write down anything they notice. And then after about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I'll stop everybody. And we'll just have a little discussion about it, see if anybody's picked up on anything. And then this is where the activity really starts for me. Because that's when I will give my students lines of inquiry or probing questions. And what I've done with all these rich tasks is I've made a note to them all in the comments section. So if you go to reviews and you go to the very first review, um, it's by me under my Tes Maths name, 
and I've just put loads and loads of different ideas for lines of inquiry and some of these are my absolute favorite so what, what about this if I start with 20 how many different numbers can can I choose and maybe I project these up on the board and I say to kids right either answer them in turn or if there's five on the board pick out the two questions that interest you the most and just have a go at these or maybe I write these down on slips of paper and kind of drop them in front of the students as I go around um, I quite like this one what's the smallest number of turns before you can choose a number which is neither a factor or a multiple of the pre of the original number uh, which number between 10 and 20 gives you the biggest choice for your next move which gives you the smallest choice find two numbers that give you the same amount of choice all different questions just about not uh, not going near strategy just about the properties of different numbers and you can tease out properties of square numbers and prime numbers and all this kind of stuff there then we can start to talk about strategy what's a winning strategy if you go first but i like this one what's the lowest number you can choose and still win and how about this if you go second what's the best winning strategy can you come up with a winning strategy what happens if we change the board what happens if it's a 1 to 50 board or a 1 to 200 or a 100 to 200 board then we get the idea of number chains completely flip the game on its head what's the largest chain of numbers that you can make if you're working together with your partner is it possible to get past 73 that's the highest uh, number that's currently recorded on the Enrich website what's the biggest number of primes you can tick off in a, in a number chain and so on now I'm, I'm not exaggerating here when I say that we um, at our school we normally get three lessons worth out of the factor multiples game lesson one is all about uh, playing it against your opponent getting familiar familiar with it and just starting to get your head around the number properties lesson two is where we start to look at strategies winning strategies for going first and going second and then modifying the rules and then lesson three is all about these number chains and looking at which numbers tend to appear in these chains and is it better to tick off the low ones first or the higher ones first what's the largest you can achieve what prime numbers can you tick off and so on and by the end of it you've students have practiced all their number properties square numbers prime numbers all that kind of stuff and been engaged in mathematics because the thing is facts and multiples kids have studied these from kind of year three year four so sometimes it can be quite frustrating just going over it the same way for, for, for students but of course these are key skills that need to be consolidated so I just find this a really interesting engaging and worthwhile way of looking at facts and multiples and I promise that is the last one of my own resources that will be included in this 2016 to 2017 uh, collection but I hope firstly if you've never heard of the facts and multiples game then give it a go and if you have heard of it hopefully that's at least given you a couple of other ideas uh, that you could uh, you could use with it and I shall return with a fresh, non-Mr. Barton Maths resource of the week next week. Take care and bye for now.